Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome to Adventures in History. Today's topic is Dearest Mother and Dad, Love, Ruth, John, Mark, Jan, Patricia, and Peter, 1980, Part 169. These are letters based on the original publication, Smallshaw Family Memories Collection Number 83, published on August 19, 2002. Letter from the editor of the SFMC. Yours truly, Peter J. Ray. And so the saga continues. Fall and winter of 1980, and Christmas again on Cistern Key, Bahamas. From one beautiful place, 21508 Avalon Drive, Rocky River, Ohio, USA, to another, Buccaneer Way, Cistern Key, or Indigo Island, Exumas, Bahamas. One thing is for sure, both places are a long way from Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada, not to mention Southwold, Suffolk, England. From Estevan to Regina to Saskatoon, to St. Augustine, Florida, to Cleveland, to Bay Village, to Rocky River, Ohio. By 1980, Ruth had gone from Regina, had been gone from Regina for 37 years, but her close relationship with her mother continued. These letters are the enduring relationship of that mother-daughter bond, and what a fascinating life Ruth had led over the years, starting her teaching career at the tender age of 19, studying at varsity at the same time, packing in a social schedule with so many beaux, making the long, bold move to Florida to continue with her teaching, university work, and dating. Then the big move to Cleveland, where John S. Ray entered her life, marrying John in 1950, graduating from college, giving up her teaching career to raise four fine children, overcoming the loss of a child in 1971, being tremendously active in community affairs, entertaining, and traveling, finding Sister and Key in the Bahamas, a refuge from the brutal Cleveland winters and a rest from the nonstop activity there, after her youngest went to college, getting back into the art scene and producing beautiful and sensational watercolors which would eventually find their way into art shows and the homes of collectors. The never-ending planning of trips to the Bahamas and other beautiful FIC locations, always wanting her mother to be near, but accepting the long-distance relationship. It's all the stuff of legend. And in 2002, the saga of Ruth and John continues. The couple who inspire all that they meet with their zest for life and never-ending enthusiasm. Over on this end, in Manila, Philippines, in 2002, life goes on, and on and on. The rains have abated. Hopefully, we will get in some baseball later in Roosevelt Park when Tim comes home from school. We haven't played many games recently due to muddy conditions, but we still have a good time, rain or shine. Tim is eagerly anticipating an an infusion of new baseball cards when his dad, me, travels to Ohio this month for the Lakeside Family Reunion. Pokemon and Game Boy are things of the past for Timmy. Now with what little free time he has due to excessive academic demands, he devotes to baseball. From across the pond, here's looking at you kids. Keep on keeping on. Peter J. Ray. 21508 Avalon Drive, Rocky River, Ohio. Actually, Lakeside, Ohio. August 19th, 1980. 30 years later. Dear Mother and Dad, The past 30 years have veritably flown by. We've just finished a lovely party. 29 folks here at Lakeside for dinner. Almost one for each year. It's been wonderful having Mark and Janice here to share it with us. Those present included Uncle John Zook, Katie Zook, Linda Zook, Mary Zook, George Ann Cummings, Mark Cummings, Helen Lacey, Steve Lacey, Connie Lacey, John, Lacey, Chris Lacey, Fred, Liz, Lacey, Bill, Lacey, Gertrude Ray, John Ray, Ruth Ray, Mark Ray, Jan Ray, Carol Wiesenhauer, Dave Wiesenhauer, Kathy Wiesenhauer, Dale Hughes, Lenore Hughes, Barb and Bill Smith. Well, well, anyway, they made toasts. Mark and Janice gave us a lovely silver bowl, and we had gifts of wine, etc., Steve and Connie gave us a lovely bell, and the kids wrote messages on a coloring book. Best of all was the lovely sentiment. We had our honey-baked ham and lovely date nut, decorated cake, and a buffet of good food. 
John's mother's baked beans and salads and casseroles, corn on the cob, wine and punch. Some went to the ballet and some to see the sun set from the dock afterwards at Lakeside. John was in federal court Monday and tomorrow taking Mark to the doctor about his neck, so he'll mail this. I was here, sorry to hear about Janet. She should get married at home in Regina. But if she gets married in Toronto, we'd like to go up if, if she'd like us there. Wish she'd wait, though. Can imagine Bud being perturbed. I would like to send Jessica the We Wisdom magazine. Would you please send me her address and the name I should use, Jessica Still? Yes, I sent both your friends the Daily Word subscription. Thank you for your letters. A lovely day today. God bless. Love you, Ruth. P.S. I'll write to Janet and Bud. Janet will be a lovely bride. Is she still going to Regina for her friend's wedding? She should wait to get married. If not, she should get married in Regina among her family and friends. If she does get married in Toronto, will you fly down? If so, we could bring you back here for a visit. Tell Bud we were upset about Mark and Janice getting married, but now love her too. I feel so lucky to have had 30 wonderful years with John and glad we went home to be married in Regina at St. Peter's. God bless. Love, Ruth. There's a letter from John. Meyer Stevens and Ray Corporation, Cleveland, Ohio, August 27, 1980. Dear Mrs. Smallshaw, thought you might like to have the enclosed copy of a postcard we received from Peter. Love, John. Now, this is a postcard that I sent to my parents. Cala Alcofar, Menorca, Spain, August 10th, 1980. Hola. Big Daddy, what's happening, man? Hey, Bahama Mama. It finally hap happened. Dancing in the streets. What I was waiting for. Last night was the fiesta at Alayor, and what fun it was. We danced and danced and danced. Ah, an old-timer's band played out on the square, and while the older people listened, many young people danced. The most fun was down the street at the dance. Because of the huge crowd, only a certain amount of people were let in. I actually had more fun waiting to get in because we could hear the music outside. They played Bob Marley, and we danced in the streets. It was heaven. Adios, Pedro. The Hilton Inn, 2424 Irwin Road, Durham, North Carolina, 27705, September 8, 1980. Dearest Mother and Dad, We had a good week at Lakeside and especially enjoyed seeing Mark and Janice. John took Mark to a doctor about his neck and we certainly hope he gets better. Tension, We bought a lovely new bedroom set for our 30th anniversary. Also a new coffee table. Hope we live to finally justify buying it. Peter arrived home from a month in Menorca, Spain with a good tan. We took him and his friend Miguel Velovsek, whom he'd visited, and Joe Novak, who had been to the Bahamas with us, out to Blossom Music Center for a picnic and ballet, a lovely evening. He only had one day to get ready, packed, and go back to Duke University. Miguel came here and we drove in two cars down to Duke. We had one good sail. Miguel's father went to South Africa. Pre Peter drove 200 miles for Miguel and we had a picnic on the way. I drove 200 miles down and 300 back of the 570. We helped Peter move his things to a new dormitory. Two of his roommates are pre-medical and one a history major who worked at the Democratic Convention. Nice fellows, clever and hard workers. The Democratic Convention for Jimmy Carter. We took Peter and Miguel out to dinner and went to a band concert with them right out Peter's dorm. About 8,000 students at $3,500 tuition each, representing $28 million, John estimated. It was good to be with Peter even, although briefly. Parents' weekend is October 24th your 83rd birthday, and we like to go down again to see him. Will you come? We phoned Janet to go down with us. I phoned and phoned her phone number, finally got a man who didn't know her. Then John phoned and talked to many people at her work who didn't know her. Then someone said she came in later, so we finally got her. 
She's moved to her boyfriend's and we couldn't persuade her to come. Wish we'd got her down before she became so entangled. I guess it was inevitable, so vulnerable. Are you planning to come for her wedding even if Mrs. Irwin doesn't? John told her she should be married in her hometown and church. She says she has more friends in Toronto. I did in Cleveland, too. However, Bud has so many in Regina. If you come, I hope you'll come down here, too. We're having an 82nd birthday party for John's mother, September 21st here. We love you, Ruth. 21508 Avalon Drive, Rocky River, Ohio, 44116. Thursday, September 11th, 1980. Dearest Mother and Dad, So good to hear from you. Thank you for the Saskatchewan Lily. We thought it was real at first. I sent in the subscription for Jessica's Wee Wisdom. I already had the address but needed the zip code. They might not take it without it. They don't always deliver mail without zip code. I sent Elva a Christmas card without it and she never got it. We still need Janet's zip code, too. She really should let people know the date a month in advance of her wedding, at least in order to get the super saver on the airlines. Does Bud think she'd postpone it until Brian gets home? Mrs. Irwin is like John's mother. She drove to Chicago for Tracy's wedding, but not to Boston for Mark's blessing. Now, now she's flying to Chicago for Tracy's baby, but wouldn't fly last year. Went to Kathy's graduation, but not Patty's. I guess some things are more important. Went to a nephew's graduation party, but not to Peter's graduation. No, I wasn't depressed when I wrote from Lakeside. In fact, I was feeling great. However, I had to write in a very small bathroom since everyone was sleeping. However, I have, I have been depressed lately. I hate to see the summer end and not much accomplished. So much to do and I'm so slow. We're having a birthday dinner for John's mother on the 21st here. Lots to do. Our beach house was broken into Friday night. It was okay while Peter stayed down there and in Menorca had boys watching it and while we were at Lakeside and to Duke University. Friday night we'd just been down, John mowing the lawn. I helped him carry down the power mower, all those steps. We'd just turned off the burglar alarm and turned down the intercom. Darn. They had a party, kicked in the door, and even left us notes. We went to the art show Saturday, and the girl who painted the picture while I painted the one that I gave Bud entered hers in a show, and it got best of the show, and she'd put a $150 price tag on it. She said she sold one before she'd finished it. So I hope Bud takes a picture, too, of it for me, has it matted and framed, and enters it in a show in Regina. We've been framing my pictures this summer myself building the frames. Will you fly to Toronto with Bud for Janet's wedding? Then you could come down here with us. Holly married a divorced man too, a professor with a nine-year-old daughter. We've had such beautiful weather, really gorgeous days. Patricia's in New York City. She was in Montreal. God bless. Love, Ruth and John. 21508 Avalon Drive, Rocky River, Ohio. 44116, September 16th, 1980. Dearest Mother and Dad, Thank you for the lovely birthday card and nice letter. We'll spend my, I will spend my birthday working, getting ready for John's mother's 82nd birthday dinner for 18 folks here. I'm so glad to hear about Daphne's wedding plans and pray her, her dad's heart operation goes well. I certainly hate to lose Jessica from our family, but I guess we did a long time ago. We wish Peter, wish Peter and we had seen them on our last trips. Life goes on. John just said what a nice letter you write, and thank you and Ruth Johnson for the lovely picture of us. What a nice remembrance for our 30th anniversary year. Augusta Lillian Fisher's trunk. I just love your trunk because it is a symbol of your independence and spirit. We have a friend who restores trunks and clocks, and I took it to her for appraisal. She said it is a good trunk and worthwhile refinishing. She would charge about $85 to do it, but is moving to Virginia next week after 20 years here. She suggested that I do it myself and explained how and what to do. 
One, new casters on the bottom to roll it. Two, a new trunk stay to keep it open. Three, wallpaper inside if I wish. Four, sand all the metal parts. Five, refinish with an oil and varnish mixture and burnt umber oil. Paint rub off. Six, finish the coat. She said it will look nice. I do hope that I can do it and it will be nice. She showed me how she stored her historical things in it. I, and I've decided it would be a great place to keep your letters, photos, and memorabilia of, of your family. Maybe Bud would like to do the same thing with the other trunk. I think Peter would be interested. Patty is planning to move to New York City. She said, you don't worry about me, but I do miss her. She said she'd like to go to Janet's wedding too, but when? We do hope you come down here if you come to Toronto with us. Please thank Ruth Johnson for the lovely picture. Wish you were in one with us too. A nice time. You and Bun were so hospitable. Lots to do. God bless. Love, Ruth and John. 21508 Avalon Drive, Rocky River, Ohio, 44116. September 30th, 1980. Dearest Mother and Dad, Thank you for the lovely birthday card and telephone call. It was a very busy birthday. We really worked. The night before you called, I thought I'd had a stroke, couldn't walk, and was dizzy. However, I'm fine now. We had a turkey dinner for 18 folks, and Patty arrived home at 8 a.m. that day, Sunday. It was for John's mother's 82nd birthday, and it was hot, 90 degrees. Fortunately, we had the air conditioning. We had turkey and dressing, and John fixed so many mashed potatoes, gravy and cauliflower. I wish I could do it for you, too. It was so lovely outdoors, and I'm glad Janet is postponing her wedding. I called Air Canada, and they have a special half-price sale on that maybe you could come back to Toronto with Janet and Joan and come down here and go to Duke University with us on your birthday, October 24th, to see Peter. Your trunk, I do hope that I can do it and it will be nice. She ho showed me how she stored her historical things in it. And I've decided it would be a great place to keep your letters, photos, and memorabilia of your family. Maybe Bud would like to do the same with the other trunk. I think Peter would be interested. Patty is planning to move to New York City. She said, you don't worry about me, but I, but I do miss her. She said she'd like to go to Janet's wedding, but when? We do hope you come down here if you come to Toronto. Air Canada had space October 21st and 22nd when I called, and I considered making a reservation for you. Parents Weekend at Duke University is October 24th, and we hope to go. It would extend your summer because it's much warmer in North Carolina. It's been wonderful having Patty home taking Patty, Carly, and Eve to, to the country club on the east side for a luncheon today. Wish you were here. We're driving Patty back to Dartmouth and moving her to New York, leaving Friday. We may see Mark in Boston. We've been sailing. We took John's mother to dinner on Sunday. Hope you're fine. Love, Ruth and John and Patty. 21508 Avalon Drive, Rocky River, Ohio, 44116. October 9th, 1980. Dear Mother, I'm so glad to, to talk. To, I was so glad to talk to you twice, and so pleased you're making the trip. Certainly hope it will work out well for you. In Toronto, the luggage goes straight to customs if you check it through to Cleveland. You'll have a couple of hours and won't have to get your luggage until you check through customs to go onto the waiting area for Cleveland. They should handle it for you. We hope someone will be there to help you in Toronto. I thought Janet might be. Bring along that gray and brown plaid dress that I took you as well as the beige dress. Also, you'll need your beige coat. Anything else good you have. The gold check suit. Love you and hope all will be well. T do take care. God bless. Love, Ruth. P.S. The weather is gorgeous here now. Hope it is when you come. And a letter from note from John. Dear Gus, we are really looking forward to having you with us. Love, John. 21508 Avalon Drive, Rocky River, Ohio, 44116, November 11th, 1980. Dearest Mother and Dad, 
We're certainly happy that you were here with us. We enjoyed having you here so much, and we'll be anxious to hear how you got along in Toronto and Regina, seeing Janet, Joan, Gary, and the Hoods. We hope all went well, and Bud will be so glad to have you home. Dad, too. We don't feel so far away when we can exchange these visits. You know that I can and will come if you need me. It was good for me to have you here, and I know Bud needs to have you there now. I've had the feeling lately that I'd lost a friend, and last night I realized in the back of my mind that friend was Pamela, still, so we know how Bud feels about Joan leaving, too. The Dickinson's visit was a whirlwind. We went to the art reception at the Yacht Club and got lots of compliments. Then we went downtown to top of the town for a wonderful dinner. Sunday after brunch, Phil Dickinson helped John with the lawnmower down to the beach. We all went to the beach house while John mowed. We went back down to the Yacht Club for another art show visit and a lovely brunch. I had a full day of painting today, sunflowers and dried weeds and a snow scene. Several said how nice it was to meet you. We had to take our cat Lucy to the vet for her back and eye. We phoned Mark and Janice Sunday for Mark's birthday. and Mark said you'd always been so nice ever since he'd known you. He'd been swimming and Jan had a birthday for him. Her dad is worse, though. How did Mr. Still get along? I would like Irene's address so I can order her own daily word. Would you like... Would you send it to me? You know we did many things and saw many people that we ordinarily wouldn't have, and that was good. Those at your party, going to the Duffs, and Mrs. Vogler and Isabel Stevens. Dick Stevens came home with John last night after the office meeting and told John he knows he's going to die. They're going to have a drink together Friday to celebrate their 29th anniversary of being partners. Sunday was such a glorious day, almost 70 degrees and so sunny that after the Dickinsons left, John raked all the leaves and I got in almost all my flowers. I framed my other picture yesterday. Now to work on the recreation room before Thanksgiving. Give our love to Bud and Dad and so glad you came. We love you, Ruth and John. 21508 Avalon Drive, Rocky River, Ohio, 44116. November 18, 1980. Dear Mother and Dad, It's been sent 10 days since you left and not a word. We're wondering how you got along, whether you saw the girls, met Gary, the suitcase intact, met by the hoods and Dad okay, and the house. The cleaning from... The cleaning woman from England phoned today and asked if you got home safe, and I said we hadn't heard. She said, What? Didn't she let you know whether she arrived safely or not? We do hope that you have a good 80th birthday for Dad. Order a cake from the Dutch pantry and have the hoods, Lynn, Bud, and a few at the nursing home. It would be nice if Bud would take Dad to 1251 Argyle Street home for a brief spell. Happy 80th birthday, Dad! John brought me home from the hospital Saturday. I was in for an operation after the Dickinsons and you left. That's where I was Friday the day before you left at the hospital for my pre-operation tests. It was on my nose, a deviated septum. Quite a traumatic thing for me. I go back to the doctor Wednesday to get the bandages off. Patty phoned today. She was assistant to the editor-in-chief for Gentleman's Quarterly a posh men's magazine, and now is working for Professor Mark Holster of the John Jay College of Criminal Justice Center for Productive Management. She's phoning around the country to get the reaction to his articles, one on the Army Corps of Engineers Dam. She's been tutoring and is in the chamber orchestra playing viola and playing Brahms' Requiem Sunday. She also has been going to the Episcopal Church and going to their poetry readings and met a nice group of people there. We're having about 16 folks for Thanksgiving next week. Tracy and Brian are bringing their baby Jennifer. Also Dick and Joan from Chicago. I hope I'm up to it all. We finished making our winter plane reservations. We have tickets for Christmas. Leave a month from today. We'll be in the Bahamas from December 18th to January 11th. The Camelback Inn in Scottsdale, Arizona from February 14th to February 22nd. And back to Cistern Key from March 5th to March 15th. I told John that's the way I like to spend the winter, traveling. 
We'll be here the middle of January till the middle of February so John can catch up on his work. I'll take some painting classes, too. Soon as, we get, as soon as we get Thanksgiving over, I'll start packing up the groceries for the Bahamas. The plane fares have gone up so much this year. You'll have to plan a winter vacation for yourself now, too. Barbados, you, sh- you should plan to come down here after Janet's wedding next June. If Bud has a reception for her in Regina, it may be later. Have you ever thought of going to the Holy Land? The woman in the next bed at the hospital, about 80 years old, just went in October and said it was her best trip, and she'd been everywhere, South America and the Orient. She had a cataract operation. We hope you are well and having a, and have a splendid birthday for Dad's 80th birthday. Love, Ruth and John. P.S. Thank God for John taking care of me. He came early and late to the hospital. Three hours there for, during my surgery. The surgery was two hours. Ruth. Now this next letter is from Peter to Ruth and John from uh, Duke University. Wilson House, East Campus, Duke University, Durham, North Carolina, November 17, 1980. Hi, Mama and Daddy. Hey, what what it is? Like, what's happening, man? Que pasa, hombre? Well, I'm just okie-dokie. Yeah, good. I'm listening to Bob Marley. I'm happy inside all the time. It's ra- It's raining and a bit cold outside. I have been reading Racial and Cultural Minorities, an analysis of prejudice and discrimination. I can't believe how fast time is going, only a month left in the semester. Did you know that Drago and Rosario have moved to Menorca, and he is probably retiring because of his health? My grades seem pretty good. I got a 94 on my sociology exam, and a 95 on my second Spanish exam, and an 88 in history. The Spanish quizzes have all been in the 90s except for an 85 last time. Just had a political science and history exam, think I crushed them. I did an in-depth interview with Henry Steele, the black janitor at House CC, which will appear in Tobacco Road, a Duke magazine, later in December. We're starting to study Cuba tomorrow in history. Yay! Well, what else has happened? I was sick for about a week and a half with congestion, coughing, headaches, and stomach pains. I'm okay now. I took the diabetes test and it was okay, too. Boy, did I have a blast when you were down here. Oh, Canada, my home and native land, God save our gracious queen. I dreamt that Grandma Smallshell was queen of the world and I was walking around with her. I haven't smoked marijuana for a month now. How about you, Daddy? And you, Mama, are you still a big nagger? No, she's a white woman. They reopened the black discotheque next to the Salam Cultural Center. Yeah, all right. I've been in a couple of times for a short boogie. There's no more room. Ciao. Pedro with love. 21508 Avalon Drive, Rocky River, Ohio, 44116. November 25th, 1980. Dearest Mother, I'm so I was so sorry to receive your letter today and learn about your shingles. I must have run you around too much and then your trip home and busy getting back. We are certainly sorry. What a shame. Today is Dad's 80th birthday, and we've been wondering how he is and how his birthday went. Patty phoned and said that she sent a card. I remember bringing him home last year for your birthday. We're in the midst of our preparation for the Thanksgiving crowd. I have a 23-pound turkey and lots to do. John has been so busy painting so many spots for me. The breakfast room, furniture, dining window, hall woodwork, it goes on and on. I've been working on the recreation room. Now for the food. Hope you're recovering and so sorry you've been ill again. Everyone said what a delight you are. John said it was unanimous. Peter said he dreamed that you were queen of the world and he was going around with you. Love, Ruth. 21508 Avalon Drive, Rocky River, Ohio, 44116. December 1, 1980. Dearest Mother and Dad, We are certainly wondering how you are and so very sorry that you were out. What does the doctor say causes it? We are also recovering from our Thanksgiving dinner. Fifteen folks came here. It was too soon for me after my operation, and I am exhausted too. Hope they all enjoyed it, a 23-pound turkey. Unfortunately, Dale and Lenora Hughes came an hour and a half early at 11.30 a.m. 
and the others came at 12 o'clock. We told them 1 o'clock. We never told them about my operation. Dick and Joan, Brian, Tracy, and their baby Jennifer had come from Chicago, and Lisa Wiesenauer and her girlfriend from Columbus. Now to get packed for the Bahamas. We're leaving in two weeks and have to pack three weeks of groceries. Oh, I bought you a lovely Christmas present yesterday. Hope you like it. It's a bedspread, spring wet meadow pattern, green pattern with flowers. God bless and do hope you're better. John's mother kept saying, and you don't have any of your family here. Love, Ruth and John. This next letter is from John. Meyer Stevens and Ray Corporation, Attorneys at Law, 2121, the Superior Building, Cleveland, Ohio. Dear Gus, December 4th, 1980. Dear Gus, we were certainly glad to hear that the shingles are getting better. Thought you would enjoy reading the enclosed copy of a letter from Carly Donaldson's mother. Love, John. 21508 Avalon Drive, Rocky River, Ohio, 44116. December 11th, 1980. Dearest Mother and Dad, It's so good to hear that you were to have an 80th birthday for Dad in spite of your awful shingles. We certainly hope they're better. Between the operation and Thanksgiving, I felt like they finished me. I've been exhausted all the time. We never told anyone of John's family about my operation. John said, of course, Carly Carol's was much more serious than it was. However, I'm recovering, but so much to do. We managed to mail your bedspread and hope to get another parcel away to you before we leave. A week from today, we meet Patty and Peter in Atlanta, Georgia, and then on to the Bahamas. Janice's father has a pacemaker in his heart and in the hospital, so Janice doesn't want to leave, so doubt if they'll come. We're going to phone them tonight. I hate to cancel the tickets because it's impossible to get more reservations. I dreamed about Pamela last night and we're so concerned about Brian. We certainly hope Bud here soon. Such a part of the world to be going through now. We hope he, he's okay and lets you all know. Will Joan come home for Christmas? Mark suggested they come to Rocky River for an old-fashioned traditional Christmas, but Patty and Peter still want to go to the Bahamas. John will be in trial Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and today he chairs a meeting of 15 lawyers about one, the biggest, million-dollar asbestos case. That will be in January. I have eight paintings at a show at Beechcliff. Remember I took you and Jean the morning you left? The shops that used to be a movie theater? Haven't sold any, though. They seem to be buying unframed ones that are cheaper. Oh, well, it's an experience, and I arranged for it to be held another week. Have been doing some better paintings, too, and getting better. I went to a luncheon with Carly Donaldson and played bridge yesterday. I hate to spend the time, though. Carly said her folks said you were so enthusiastic and spirited, and I'd be just like you. Patty said, why wait? Soma is better and Lucy, too, the two cats. The weather is great that I planted a five dozen bulbs. It was in the 60s. It's cold now, but going up again. Must pack the groceries. We love you, Ruth and John. 21508 Avalon Drive, Rocky River, Ohio, 44116, December 12, 1980. Dearest Mother and Dad, Your lovely Christmas card and letter arrived today. What true words! You had so many questions that I must have missed writing a letter. I have been so tired I even lost a, a charge up. I lost a charge a plate. It's 3 o'clock a.m. and I'm down in the recreation room trying to figure out how we're going to pack everything. John will be on in trial Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at $75 an hour and, and until we leave so we have to pack tomorrow. I'll probably end up every night anyway. I got this recreation room cleaned up for Thanksgiving, then messed it up framing my paintings for the show. Oh, I sold two paintings tonight. They called me. Remember the Barths we were in Hope Town, Bahamas with? Al, who is an artist, bought my painting, $85, as an anniversary gift surprise for Jean. It was one of my driftwood ones, and John suggested the title Beached. The Barths and we had a terrible accident when they beached their boat. Actually, it would have been funny if it was not so dangerous down in Hope Town, where you were with us then. 
The other painting, Land's End, a boat, was bought for $75 by someone from Huron because her parents' cottage was called that. Mark and Jan decided to go to the Bahamas today and were thrilled. John told them if you really want to do something, you do it. Actually, it's, co it's costing us about $1,100 just to bring them down. Almost $600 for plane fare, $400 for charter planes, and $100 for the boat because they are coming and going on different days than we are. So over $100 a day just to camp. Expensive trip. We're meeting Patty and Peter Thursday in Atlanta. Hope it all works out. Thank you for the $10 in the letter. So sorry I didn't acknowledge it. I gave it to my cleaning woman for Thanksgiving since I was so grateful for her coming before Thanksgiving. She even offered to come and serve and do the dishes, but I did them all myself. John did the pots and pans. Yes, I cooked the 23-pound turkey. Who else would do it? I cooked one in September for John's mother's birthday when it was 92 degrees out, air-conditioned in. I cooked the stuffing separately, which I wouldn't do again because I don't think it's as good. But Carol and John's mother have a thing about maybe it's not too safe in the turkey. So Carol cooks hers separately, but I think mine was too dry. John peeled 16 potatoes. I'm going to cook another one to take to the Bahamas like I did last year. We ate it, we ate it when we were stuck on Norman's Key. Lenore and Dale Hughes brought wine and John a lovely ultra suede jacket. That will mean something to Bud and Lynn. We had 16 folks here, Dick and Joan, Tracy and Brian, and their new great-granddaughter Jennifer from Chicago. I even got out the cradle and bought a swing for her. Carol and Dave Wiesenauer and Lisa and her friend from Columbus and Kathy. Carly and Dick Donaldson didn't have anyone, so, so went to the Yacht Club. Wish I'd known. They could have come too. We just went tonight to a Boar's Head Festival with them at their church. You'd have loved it. 200 folks there each night, each two nights, all in Elizabethan costumes and brought in the Boar's Head. Also later, they all carried in flaming plum puddings and sauce, a real feast. A royal court with gestures, banners, and candles like an old English castle. Very impressive. Both groups had their own crown roast of pork with dressing. Last Saturday, we went to Bev and Joe Sch Schneider's penthouse with the Stevens, about 120 folks there. We played bridge Wednesday. I made a slam. I baked my cranberry sauce this year for Thanksgiving and will bake more for the Bahamas. No, we don't leave the airport in Miami. They have a hotel there that we go up to the rooftop dining room for dinner and it's lovely. Tell Ruth Johnson at least they are getting married. Life goes on. We're still alive. I still hope to get another, another parcel away to you. I mailed a silver candelabra for a wedding gift for a friend's son in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. Mark and Jan may get to the wedding. We got a lovely card and photo from Bud. Certainly concerned about Brian. Love, Ruth and John. P.S. Have a Merry Christmas. Wish you could see all these groceries. It's almost 50 degrees here tonight. We, I go back to the doctor on Monday. I'm so thrilled. They sold two of my paintings over at Beechcliff. $85 plus $75. $160. One I didn't think was good enough to frame. And I have lots more. Fred says they're just like money in the bank. Now we have one letter to the editor from my father, John S. Ray. Dear editor, what a wonderful four pages of color pictures for SFMC 83. Thank you. Peter, dancing in the streets in Spain. What fun. Red finally was able to persuade her mother to come visit. A major accomplishment. Gus was such a good person. Dick C. Stevens was sick with cancer and knew he was going to die. He certainly ever lived every day to the hilt. What a great line. I dreamt that Grandma Smallsha was queen of the world and I was walking around with her. Fred Leach says Red's paintings are money in the bank. A real tribute to Red because he's a great painter. I wonder how my million dollar trial turned out. Unfortunately, I do not remember it. Keep up the good work. Love, Dad. John S. Ray, Rocky River, Ohio. Well, that concludes today's presentation. Thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate it. God bless you. Take care, and I'll see you next time.